So I'm guessing you already know what automation is. If you don't, automation is basically automatically doing a function inside of FL Studio or a parameter that you can change. So volume slider like this, you can automate it from going low to higher, automate panning. You can turn off uh, an effect slot, an effect on and off, or a channel on and off, parameter EQ, and you can change this back and forth. You can sweep across this frequency swift, which is the first one that we're gonna do. So I'll use this beat quickly to demonstrate. To start with all automation, you want to select an area of which you want the automation to be affected in. You could have it on the whole track if you don't select anywhere, do it throughout the whole track. So first we do right click and drag and we just select this first start area. Come over to the mixer and for this I could do it on the master channel as it's affecting the whole track to start with, but I'm just going to do it on here for now on this one where both of these audio clips flutes are. So if I click on the EQ, see if I play the beat now and I drop that down, we're just getting that low end and we kind of want it to go like this. So to create an automation clip, you right click on a knob on this instance, on this effect here, you can't do this. So you have to actually come to the corresponding knob, which is this one here. As you can see, it moves it up and down. And if we right click on that, you go down here and you see create automation clip. So let's create that clip. And in the playlist, you see it's automatically pasted in the automation inside that area of which we've chosen. So let's bring this down here. At the moment, it's not being effective. If we run the EQ side to side, we can see nothing's changed. So if we pull this down, we can see how the EQ is already showing us that it's changing. So now we push play. Lovely, we've got a nice like frequency panner in there already. On to the next example. So if we listen here. So before the 808 and the drums kick in, maybe we want to have something like a tape stop effect here. So if we select that area again, and I just want to affect these two things here or the whole track, there's a couple of ways in which you can do this inside of FL. You can do it native by using gross beat. So if you come into gross beat, click on the drop down menu, go to presets and then go to momentary. And you'll see here that you have a vinyl stop. Play it now. And that's just timing. We'd need to time that right. Maybe we'd do it at a shorter point and we could time that out and we could automate that, just turn that on and off. The way I do it is using a plugin called D Blue Tape Stop. And uh, I'll leave the link in the description. We've got our tape stop plugin here and we want to affect it in this little area only. So this triggers at 0 0.50. So I'm going to put it at 0. Point. Let's have a listen. I'm going to leave it at 49. I'm going to right click, create automation clip, and bring it down here. And so anything over this is going to trigger it. If we pull this node up here, let's have a listen. Okay, it's not in the perfect time. We can fix it up. But then you'll notice if you continue to play it, it's not going to be playing again because at the end of each automation, it's going to stay at that position that we've selected it here. So what we need to do is right click just below the last one. And then we want to set this one just below either 49 or below. So it's at 49 now. So if we listen again. perfect we're getting playing again now we just need to play with the settings this slow down effect is it does the speed of how how quickly it slows down so if we play again which isn't too bad if we wanted to make it a bit shorter we could drag these points across so we could move this here shift and left click and drag we can move it across in the same position it was otherwise if we left click and drag it's just going to move up and down so if we play again and we could shorten this There we have, there we have our nice little tape stop effect just to drop us into the beat. Another effect that we could do, another one of their free plugins, D Blue Glitch. You can do a number of different things, a reverse, a shuffler, re trigger. You can even got tape stop built into this one, delay stretcher. And I'm gonna use a gator for this just as an example. So if we have a listen. So if we select this first bar here and we just want the gate to happen here, go back into the mixer and we just want to turn this one on and off when we want to use it. So if we select off, right click and create an automation clip, here it is down here. At the moment it's completely turned off as we can hear, we can set this for just this little area here. So if we've got our first node at start and our node at the end, if we right click anywhere in here, it's going to create us a new node. We'll left click and drag that all the way up so it's turned on, it has to be 100% to be turned on. Do another right click, we we'll drag that up, drag this one back and now, and it goes back to normal. If we didn't have this last node here, it's just going to continue playing. You could do that for a number of different plugins if you want to turn them on and off. Okay, so let's go to another example. Maybe we want to fade the track out right at the end. So if we go over to the master channel, we right click on the master slider. We go create automation clip. Now you can see it's created it across the whole length of the track. Maybe let's just fade it out from here. So if I right click anywhere, it's going to see it's dropped down. If I right click and, and copy in this previous value here, I can just right click on this one and then paste in the value. And then I can just drop this one down. So let's have a quick listen to that. Oh. 
as you can see it's nicely fading out you could also use this anchor point in the middle here left click and drag that up and down and you can see how it eases it in and out either quicker or, or slower you can right click on that to reset it and make sure that you're on a single curve for that one another example we could use is panning so say we wanted to pan this flute left and right We've got our area selected we right click on the pan create automation so in this area we're gonna this is set at 50 percent so that's smack down the middle say we wanted to pan this from left to right maybe we could go like from here all the way up and all the way down so it's going to go from left all the way to right really simple there's another important thing to think about when doing automation sometimes fl studio so we've got this We've got that gator on there, so if I delete that, and it's gone, right? Later on, okay, I wanna use that again, or I wanna change some stuff to it, and I wanna use it. If I turn it on here inside of the mixer here, and I push play, you see it's turned off. It just keeps turning off, I can't keep it on. Right, so some of these controls you have to manually delete. We open up the browser, we go up here to current project, click on current project, go down to initialize controls, and then you'll see all of these initialized controls we've done through our automation. So we've got the deep blue glitch, mute and solo, that's the one that we're looking for. We right click that, delete event. Now if we go back and play, if I click that on, it doesn't keep turning itself on and off. That's a real quick and easy introduction into FL Studios automation. There's plenty of stuff you can do. Have a play around.